Podtacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast presents episode 626, Nacho's Halo, recorded live on April 26th, 2018. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Podtacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast. I am your host, Dust Storm. I am your co-host, Godzilla T. And apparently we have a guest host, Mr. Motorcycle, in the background. <laughs> Mr. Fartbot, but, you yeah. know. Oh, <laughs> is that what that was? No, I've got a neighbor that decides that he wants to ride his, his little putt-putt up and down the street for 20, 30 minutes, and then he gets bored and he puts it away. So I apologize in advance for the uh, <laughs> noise in the background. There's nothing I could do about it. It was just interesting timing. <laughs> yeah, it was. He, he didn't decide to start until I start recording. Yeah, that's nice. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Maybe you'll get bored quickly tonight. Maybe. Anyways, so we're here to talk about probably what everyone already knows about with what's going on with El Duido. We did mention it last week of it being released on Friday last week. And there is some news around that. Obviously uh, not so great news, not terrible news, but we'll get to that in a little bit. And we got some matchmaking playlist update for Halo five going in our way as well. So I guess let's do a quick weekend recap of everything that happened. So GT, how did our game night go? Last it went Friday. extremely well. We had lots of fun blowing people up. <laughs> yes, we did. It was a lot of fun. And I actually showed up. Yes. Believe it or not. Yeah, he uh, actually lasted longer than I did. <laughs> <laughs> not too much longer after that, though. Well, you, you get to start your day a little later than I do, so. This is true. It was a lot of fun, though. And then we also have, I believe... This coming weekend is possibly the achieving achieving Halo stuff as well. Finale for Halo Five, if, right? If I can get, I think if I can get at least two people, we can get it done. Very nice. So for those that are listening to this on Mixer, hit GT up if you haven't participated yet. Now, there's a couple of people in here. I don't think Haas has been in one of them yet. I'll 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 know if Haas would be up for it. Haas is busy. <laughs> oh come on just a little just a little time well what, what would it take an hour <laughs> if we're lucky <laughs> this last one mm, could be interesting as far as challenging there's some uh there's one achievement you've got to be really coordinated on which one's that one where you have to destroy two of the power cores simultaneously and the two power cores are not visible with each other. Oh, yeah. Well, and that, that simultaneous, I think, is within, what, two seconds? Yeah, you still got to you still got to hit it pretty close. Uh, you know, doing the wardens was hard enough. Even with, the, you know, with the wardens, you could kind of keep an eye on the other players and adjust your movement to try to sync everybody up. But it'll be interesting to do the uh, cores. There will be a save checkpoint before we start. <laughs> Just it. so we don't have to play through the whole level again. <laughs> if we happen to get a checkpoint right at that point. I think there's ways to force checkpoints in certain situations, right? I think if you are still in battle, in other words, there's enemies still around, you will not get a checkpoint. But eh, that may not work. Okay. Basically, all I'll do is I'll just save it. Save the list. Last checkpoint before we go for the core, you know, we'll clear everything out, get a checkpoint. I'll save at that point. And it also makes it a little easier on editing as well. And definitely I've heard of the pains of editing. So that well, would you, be you've edited video really before. You know what it's like. Yeah, that's true. But you've done it more recently than I have. Yeah, you probably ought to work on that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Some of us are still waiting for a payoff. Huh? Some of us are still waiting for a payoff. <laughs> I hear you. Gotta get that worked out at some point. 
Let's go ahead and jump on into, I guess, the easy news to go over, which will be the Halo 5 matchmaking updates. We have a whole slew of things that are going to be changing with the Halo 5 matchmaking and some true skill updates. First of which is a new elimination playlist, which will be coming to the ranked matchmaking playlist. And this includes the ever popular extermination, which has kind of been the new and improved, I'll put that in air quotes, breakout that everyone has really enjoyed. That's where you have the 20 second respawn. And if your whole team gets, or maybe it's 15 second respawn. If your whole team gets eliminated within that respawn time, then uh, the other team wins the round and it's the five rounds. And I played that a couple of times and it is actually kind of fun. It makes it a little more enjoyable than, than breakout for me. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, it's not a, a game type I would regularly play, but it's nice to throw in something different. Uh-huh. But this within, within this elimination playlist, there's still going to be Breakout and Breakout 2.0, which I'm not even sure what Breakout 2.0 is. Looking at the link that they posted in there for Breakout 2.0, it looks like this was something they did to refresh Breakout back in 2016, September. So original Breakout, Breakout 2.0, and this extermination game mode will all be included within this elimination playlist. And there are maps for each specific game mode. So Breakout has the original six Breakout modes. Breakout 2.0 has all the refreshed or updated Breakout maps with the exception of Nell or Kneel. Replacing Canal, I guess it's Canal. Oh, Canal for Canal, which would make sense. And then Extermination has 12 different maps that it will be on as well. That will be starting uh, next week on May 1st, which will start off the summer 2018 season. So if you haven't gotten your ranked or you haven't gotten your rank in ranked playlist yet and you want to get. Well, I guess we're not doing custom nameplate skin things for the seasons anymore so i guess it doesn't technically matter well i think they ran out of i think they ran out of emblems for the seasons how hard is it to create an emblem though well you know they're busy (laughs) you know they're busy they're busy they're fixing mcc shouldn't be that busy Uh, honestly right now i would prefer them focus on halo 6 and mcc and not worry about adding stuff to halo 5 it would take an artist four hours to come up with one, but fair point. Or let the community do something. I'm sure the community has done something. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying it'd be hard, but for social playlist updates, they're going to actually be changing it up to two rotational playlists. They're going to be taking away the Griff Ball and Action Sack permanent playlists and going to have two rotational playlists. This will go into effect uh, this weekend actually shoddy snipers is going to be coming out technically today as of this recording april 26th and it moves into rotational slot number one and then on may 1st i believe that's when griff ball and action sack will be taken away and then those two specific playlists will be put into the rotational playlists of the rotation of playlists Uh, And Griffal will be back in rotational slot two on May 17th, but there'll be two rotational playlists, which will be alternating every other week. So rotational playlist one, which kicks off today will be shoddy snipers. We'll be here for two weeks and then we'll be replaced by castle wars. And then in two weeks we'll be replaced by anniversary throwback. And starting on May 1st, triple team will take over rotational slot two. Two weeks later, replaced by Griff Ball. Two weeks later, replaced by To Be Determined. So there will be two rotational playlists happening throughout the s- social playlists now. No, well, that's kind of nice. Yeah. I mean, it's nice. You'll have something new every week to play. I think it's a good change because it it is nice to have those rotational playlists have that kind of focus and then you have something come in for the week, but a week is almost like not long enough. So having it in there for two weeks is kind of nice. So I think this is a 
pretty cool idea. I like the way this is going. Yeah, me too. I'm excited for Castle Wars to come back. Oh, most definitely. I don't I don't think I've done Shotty Snipers in Halo 5. Yeah, and I probably won't. <laughs> Triple team I haven't done much either. Uh, but Castle Wars I'll probably play. Griff Ball, maybe. Anniversary throwback for sure. TPD, well, that'll be TPD. <laughs> Bad joke, I'm sorry. Ranked updates. So in addition to Elimination, which is going to be coming, we also have Free For All playlist being updated. So in addition to the default FFA game mode, there will also be the HCS FFA on the Truth and Regret HCS versions. That will be introduced into that playlist. And the Team Arena is going to also get an updated version of Griffball on Eden and Truth. And then there is some improvements that they've made to uneven teams in ranked play as far as players quitting out from a match. So something that they found is if a player quits, if a match or if a match starts at 3-4, the soft forfeit system, which was supposed to be kind of in place of if you start off 4-4 and you if someone else quits, then the game won't penalize any succeeding quitter after that as hard with CSR loss. Apparently, the system wasn't quite tuned right in the case of if a match started off balance to where that soft forfeit actually didn't kick in and it actually max penalized per- someone that would leave from that team with three players. So they've adjusted that to where it should be more correct and the amount of CSR that you would lose. I like the fact that they also uh, changed the CSR system a little bit as well. If you hang around in that match and you finish it, and if you still lose, you still won't lose as much CSR on a loss as if you were had a full team. Yeah, so, so you, you still, still lose, lose less. C- you still lose less CSR if you stay in the game than if you quit. Uh, because if you quit, then it just counts as a loss. They don't excessively punish you for quitting out. Right. But if you manage, if you manage to win the match, you get an extra bonus to your CSR. So there, there is incentive to stay. Yeah. So it's almost like the thing. If, if you start 4v4, if you're the first quitter, you get the max penalty. If you quit after that, it's not as bad. If you finish through and you still lose, Definitely not as bad. But if you stay in and win, you get kudos by getting some some increase in CSR, which I think is a good thing. It kind of makes sure that people stay in the game to kind of finish it out. And yeah, it kind of sucks. But overall, from my personal experience, even when we're down, it feels good to finish a game and still say, well, we lost, but we know why we lost, but it still felt good to finish the game. Unless you're just getting complete steamrolled as like, Okay, well, let, let's just let them finish it, and then we'll we'll get to our next game. Yeah, you know, I very rarely actually quit out of a game unless I come across somebody that's just being absolutely abusive. Same. And then even even then, I'll I'll hang around just to be annoying. <laughs> but I like the fact that they're rewarding you for staying in the game. You know, even though if you don't win, you still lose CSR, it's still kind of a reward because you don't lose as much as if you quit. Right. If, you know, if your CSR actually matters to you, you know, some people, their CSR doesn't matter to them. You know, their, their rank just doesn't matter to them, which that's fine. I mean, that's their, their choice. The last time I cared about rank was Halo three and even then it was just like well i know i'm not that good but i'll try to get better yeah i've i've never been one that really cared about rank the only in the past the only reason i'd play ranked playlist is because i would get a more fair matchup you know because it would have that ranking system on the addition of the standard matchmaking to help level the playing field which is a little ironic given the next thing they're going to talk about which is the new version of True Skill? Yeah. Sorry, I was I cut you off there. What were you going to say? No, I just 
I was just saying, you know, that's in the past, that's why I played rank play instead of social, because in social, they didn't match make anybody. They just, they put 16 people in a lobby and let it go or eight people in a lobby and let it go. They didn't look at the individual player's skill. So, you know, I could, you know, in Halo 5 ter- terms, I could be paying against a champion and not even know it unless I looked at their, uh, you know, looked at their stats. And it's. Well, and I thought part of, th- I don't know, I-, I forget whether or not they said this. I know they, they had a reason why they intentionally hid like the gamer tags beforehand. And I know they had a reason for hiding the skills beforehand, but it was almost one of those things. I don't know. I, it could have gone either way, I think, but having this, the rank shown before a match sometimes would help fire you up to be like, okay, let's, these guys might have a higher rank than this, but let's try to take them down. Well, you know, I, I've always, the fact that they quit showing the rank, it does annoy, annoy me. It's not something that, you know, I'm going to go pick it in front of 3434. Three, four. I would like to see the rank of the players that are matched against me and on my team. So I get a better idea of what I'm up against. You know, the only reason I would quit out at that point, if I matched up against a team of fifties, <laughs> but that's that, just like, Nope. It, you know, here lately, I've been, I got a bug to play some, uh, free for all. Of course, at the time, the only playlist was the HCS free for all. I played, I think, four or five games. I had one game that I got matched with equivalent or equal skilled players. And it, I actually wound up winning that, winning that match. All the other, all the other matches, I was being matched against diamonds and champions. That's good. And I have, yeah, that was great, except for I was getting stomped. <laughs> and I have zero rank in free for all. You know, I, I hadn't ranked, you know, I hadn't ranked at all, but yet it's matching me against diamonds and champions. That tells me there's something wrong with the matchmaking system. Yeah. Well, that's all about to change. So I'm really looking forward to this new matchmaking system. Supposedly <laughs> they've had it in in effect in the social, in a few of the social playlists already. I can't say that I've actually noticed because that kind of stuff you don't notice when you play Super Fiesta all the time. <laughs> yes. So the thing that we're alluding to is called it's True Skill 2. So it's a revision of True Skill, which was developed for Halo way back in the day. And it is been in the social and Warzone playlists for a while now. They didn't specify since when it's been in there, but uh, it was developed by the Microsoft research team. There's actually a paper that they published on the Microsoft research site. If there's anyone that is interested in reading up on that, then there's a link in the playlist update that you can go uh, download. Uh, One of the interesting things that is just in the abstract that's on the site where you can download the PDF, it says true skill Two predicts a historical match or predicts historical match outcomes with 68% accuracy compared to 52% accuracy of true skill, which is a pretty significant jump. Yeah. 16% is nothing to bulk at for sure. It is something that they've seen in halo a lot more of a win percentage that's closer to 50%, which is kind of evidence to where it's working within the social playlists. And I, I don't know how exactly that, that works with the Warzone playlist because every time I go into traditional Warzone, I get stomped. <laughs> if they're seeing better matches of it, then great. Well, I have been playing Warzone Assault. and Okay. I've noticed in at least in assault, I really I don't play regular Warzone by myself, but I'll I'll play assault, and I've noticed that the matches are pretty balanced. Even when I lose, it's usually because there's a balance between the team defending and the team attacking. 
Okay. You know, don't get me wrong. There's some games, you know, we'll be able to take the bases real easily. Um, but that's more, more on the side of disorganization by the other team than it is just pure skill. But, you know, on that first base, everybody's pretty much got the same weapons. And that usually seems to be the, the, the sighting base. Gotcha. You know, where you can really gauge the match. And it's been a battle to take that first base where in the past, you know, it was, you know, in the past I've had games where you know, you'd either take the bases just really easy or you wouldn't, you wouldn't even get close to the base. That's a good point. But you know, every, every time I've played, we've at least got in the base and taken some time off capture. You know, we've never, you know, the games I've played, most of them, we've at least taken some time off the capture. We never really got skunked. It seems to be working in that playlist. It probably will be more evident in smaller games like 4v4 or free for all because those games are are really more skill based than you know a war zone match. I I should say accentuates the skill gap more than a war zone match would. And I think that's a good I mean, if that's the case for multiple games, then yeah, that definitely is is helping. And maybe that has transitioned over to Warzone, and I haven't played Warzone since they've applied it. So maybe it's worth at least trying again. Well, regular regular Warzone, there's still. I mean, the reason I don't play it by myself is there's just too many twelve man teams out there. You almost have to go in with a twelve man team. Although, I'm assuming the matchmaking is probably trying to match you against other parties of your size. So if you're going with a team of four or six, you're probably going to match up with other parties that have teams of four or six in there. The only thing with Warzone is you have a lot more factors to consider when you're actually doing the matching, I think. Well, you know, the reason I say the reason I play Warzone Assault is because there's really, I mean, there's some communication that does need to happen. But the there's single objectives. You know, the objective is to take that base. Everybody knows the objective. There's not 27 different things going on like in regular Warzone where, you know, you not only have to protect your bases, you have to go get AI kills, you have to kill the enemy, you have to capture bases. You know, there's a lot going on in a regular Warzone match where if you've got a team of people that are communicating, then it goes it goes a lot better. Yeah. So if you go in with a group, even if it's just six or eight people, you have a higher chance of actually winning than you do if you solo queue. And I think that's a, with the better percentage on the teams than solo queuing, I think that kind of makes sense. Yeah. From a matching perspective. I just, I'm, I'm not sure how much it's going to help regular Warzone on that. It's just, I don't think the system. And it's nothing about it's nothing against the system. It's just when you start getting into bigger and bigger teams, that the true skill matchmaking has less effect on the outcome of the game. I should say, is I guess is what I'm trying to say. Where you know when you're a four v four, you know if all eight players are really close in skill gap, then it's going to be a tough game and it'll go back and forth. Unlike, you know, now where you can get very lopsided teams. So overall, I think it's going to do a lot to help, but I just, you know, it's going to be more noticeable in the smaller match or the smaller matchmaking or smaller mm, excuse me, team sizes. Well, and based off what they said, they've seen already with the social and war zone with it being more matches that are closer to 50%. Sounds like they're getting great feedback anyway. So, oh, yeah. We have a couple of things that they've pointed out about the true skill, too. So, the new system, this is, this is probably kind of one of the, the bigger ones, but uh, it's much faster at figuring out the skill of a new player, which will mean that you will actually get matched more appropriately and more quickly for new players. And they said this is especially important due to Halo 5 now being included in Xbox Game Pass with people purchasing that subscription, which kind of makes sense. 
Also, some of the uh, free to play weekends, I think, is also another kind of beneficial thing, which they didn't listen here, but they had the free to play a couple weeks ago during the Halo World Championships. So it kind of makes sense where you have people that are only maybe playing this during that weekend where their experience will be that more quickly balanced and enjoyable. So there's that advantage too. Uh, the new system is also able to use information across all game modes and playlists instead of just specific playlists that you're going into. GT, you want to explain how this works since you're kind of the one that explained it to me? Well, basically what they're looking at is when they're matching individual players, Just we'll just use solo queuing for an example. They don't just look at your history in the single playlist. So they, you know, just for example, Team Slayer. They don't just look at your experience in the Team Slayer playlist. They look at how you perform in Rumble, in SWAT, in Team Objective, in Warzone to better judge your uh, capability and what your skill is and try to match you with people that are closer to your personal skill. So they, they're taking it. They're starting to take account, take a, in account your personal skill, not necessarily your team skill. Like it currently does. Currently it looks at all the players in a team and then kind of averages it out and matches it against another team that averages it out. Well, now they're trying to match it, match you a little closer with people on both teams that are around the same skill. Now, you know, if you're playing with a, you know, if you're playing one of the team playlists and you have a really high skill player and a really low skill player, the really low skill player is probably not going to have as much fun. <laughs> Um, but it should be a little bit closer. Which is good. The other thing that they listed was uh, accounts for the advantage of being in a fire team based off fire team sizing mode. So it's also going to take account not necessarily player specific skill, but also when you're matching up as a fire team. And, and I guess they're kind of averaging out or estimating the fire team's overall skill more accurately. Uh, and it also says they're taking the individual players play history and taking all that data in order to match them up against another team. So cr- great things coming to matchmaking side of things for true skill, which is good to see. And I think that's pretty much all the the updates that we have for the playlist stuff. Again, if you want to read more into what true skill two actually is, there is the, Microsoft research paper. There is a link to that in the May playlist updates post. And another thing is Warzone Turbo is going to make its return on May 24th and will be up for five days until May 29th, which I'm always happy for Turbo because I get to use rec weapons I don't normally get to use other than when I use them in Super Fiesta. (laughs) Hey, I got two Phaetons to blow. There you go. (laughs) I have a regular Phaeton and I have a Helios. I want to say I have four Phaetons, maybe five. Well, this, these two Phaetons make number six and seven that I've gotten. Whoa. I don't think I've gotten uh, more know, than 20, but still only five In and the six. history of Halo 5, in my history of Halo 5, this is number six and number seven. Yikes. So tell me how many, how many Phaetons you have, Bobby. <laughs> Is he still in here? Or is he struggling on his I don't know. Bionets? He can listen to it on download then. <laughs> Another little tidbit, which is semi not related to this post, but Unishek, after being uh or after working with 343 for two years, is now an official Microsoft employee. So he was the one that actually wrote this playlist update and i guess now they actually let i guess they only let employees write some of the blog posts specific stuff but yeah we're gonna check us now officially employed by 343 that's cool i'm happy for him 
Me too. He's definitely put the work in for it. And he is now the associate community manager at 343. So he's Bravo secretary. Oh. Sketches secretary. Or, sorry, sketches secretary. <laughs> he gets sketches coffee, I guess. And then pones what everybody. Black, two sugars. Oh. Uh. <laughs> and then he just pones everyone in infection and extermination. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so there you go. I don't, didn't see any mention in here of play dates, but I'm assuming they're probably going to be doing play dates for some of these rotational playlists and maybe even Warzone Turbo at some point. So keep an eye out for those on Definitely. the Twitter sphere. And hopefully they're at a time that you can actually join them. Yeah, that's almost never for me. Or if I do get to play with them, then it's like maybe for 30 minutes when, by the time I get home. It's always during their work day, like in the middle of the day. Don't get me wrong. I understand, but maybe have some a little later in the day. For us responsible people to actually have a day job. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry you're on the wrong coast, but you got to think of the rest of the country now. <laughs> well, you would actually think it would work to our favor because we're later in the three hour difference. But it would because they do it like at one o'clock or two o'clock their time. People are just getting off of work and then they have to get drive home and they're only doing the play date for an hour or two hours. Well, I think the last one they did at was like one o'clock Pacific time. I was still at work. I mean, I get Same. off at three o'clock, but I'm still at work. By the time I got home, it was all done. When you get off at three o'clock, which is when they start their time. Right. Yeah. By the time you get home and by the time you get settled, there's like, what, 30 minutes left? If that. Well, no. By the time I get home, there was no time left. <laughs> well, by the time I got home and got everything taken care of. That's what I mean. But you know, hold them at like four o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. Pacific time. That means it'll be five o'clock here or no. Four, six o'clock there. Six o'clock seven, here. Seven o'clock. Seven here. o'clock on the East coast. Of course, what that does is also put more people online. So your chances of actually getting in a game with them go down. So yeah, and look at it that way too. Yeah, but that spreads more love towards others that might not have the chance to actually get the unicorn skin. I wouldn't mind having it, but it's not like I'm going to use it. <laughs> True. So that is it for the matchmaking playlist update. Now on to the juicy news. El Dorito. Let's El start from a positive note. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Let's start from a positive note. GT, have you had a chance to play? As a matter of fact, I have. Nice. It only took me what? a day and a half to figure out how to get into a game, but hey, I did. <laughs> a couple of people had some issues. It was a little bit of a rough start. Yeah, there were some joining issues with it. But over the past couple of days, I've gotten to put a couple hours into it. And I tell you what, it's the most fun I've ever had playing Halo 3. I would agree. And they fix I, it I to point where it's people scan. And they die. Yes. Yes. That is probably the most gratifying change that the El Dorito team made to the Halo Online mod is they made it hit scan. And in addition to that, something that I have really appreciated because I couldn't. So everyone knows that I don't like Halo 3 because the, the aiming mechanics like the vertical and the horizontal don't match up it, it's crazy to me but they had a setting where you can manually adjust the sensitivity or how much oh of course the community update just got released crap of course <laughs> anyways back on track we might break and get to that later you can change the horizontal and vertical axis sensitivity or speed or, or whatever. So I was actually able to match it up and I can actually play the freaking game. It's, it's incredible. And I went on a tear on narrows last night and I got probably two or three quick scopes, a couple of additional headshots zoomed in. And I think I got a total of six or seven kills with a sniper. 
on Narrows, which is unheard of for me in Halo 3. It's so much fun. Yeah, my first game was a uh, free-for-all on Narrows. And I came in mid-game. Keep this in oh, mind. Um, the guy in the lead when I joined in was at... Where was he? I think he was about 15 kills. So, you know, the game is more than half over as far as kill count. And I actually managed in the time it took him to get the last 10 kills. I actually was able to make it up to third place. Nice. I was really impressed with myself. And then the games just went downhill from there. So, you know, I went back to average. Oh, my average. But no, I. I really enjoyed, I really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. They've done a wonderful job with it. Unfortunately, they did it wrong. How do you mean? Well, they didn't adhere to Microsoft's user user agreement. Oh, you're talking about the, the game. Yeah. Sorry. You know, I, I applaud the guys and gals, people that worked on this project they did an awesome job don't get me wrong there's still some little bugs and stuff in there but they're nothing major um you know i i didn't have any performance issues uh once i was able to you know get into games and start playing but that was more the more more on the side that i'm not used to a pc shooter you know i'm not used to dealing with you know a pc game in that respect that was most of my problem, but you know, once I figured out, you know, how to actually get the game to join matches, I, I had a blast. Well, let, let's talk about all the good stuff before we get to the, the bad stuff, because there's a couple more things I want to point out about the mod before we dive into the whole legal stuff. And, and we kind of hinted a little bit at this last week because the mod was released last Friday, which would have been the 20th. And Forge Hub had announced that they were going to be working with the El Dorito team to host Forge maps, which there were quite a few already out in the wild. Uh, some of the, some like other Halo 2 maps were kind of like reforged. And I haven't looked at the Forge tools yet, but judging by a couple of the maps that are out there, it seems very similar to the style of the Halo 2 Anniversary Forge stuff with some of the pieces with already predefined textures and that kind of stuff. Uh, and a lot of the kind of building blocks. So you have the pads, the blocks, the big bricks, that kind of stuff. Um, so that, that was cool that the integration was going to be there. And that forge was kind of full fledged built out and really enhanced. The customization was really cool. Um, being able to go in and actually custom define color values is, I think a pretty nifty improvement. Did you have a chance to mess around with any of the custom color codes? No. I just went in and started playing. There you go. <laughs> I was having too much fun playing. Very nice. There is uh, another slew of customizations that you can do with the keyboard and controller. And one of the nice things about the controller is you can actually custom map buttons on the controller, which was awesome. They They actually imported other games controller schemes they imported the reach controller scheme they imported the halo 4 controller schemes and nothing was quite exactly right so i actually customized my own controller layout to where it felt really comfortable uh to play with and it didn't really take that long to figure out yeah for me i just go ahead sorry for me i just opened up the accessory apps and swip flip two buttons that that's all the, I for the all I did. Yeah, okay. I didn't go. You know, I used one of the default uh, controller layouts because you know, that's what I use, and it was what I used. So you know, I was already used to that control scheme, but I had to switch two buttons because the version of my control scheme that they had was different than the one in Halo Five. So I had to flip the buttons, and after that, I was all good. Very nice. <clears throat> Pretty bad when you push in the wrong button to throw a grenade. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I just went into the Xbox accessories app and switched it. And then 
all fixed. Very nice. So another thing that I want to highlight before we kind of roll into the legal stuff, the server browser, which made it feel just like any other Halo game that's been on PC so far. So Halo, including the original Halo CE on PC, Halo 2 Vista, and Halo 5 Forge. Server list itself reminded me very much of the Halo 2 Vista server list. So that was awesome to be able to pull up that server list, go in, and they actually had the Halo Reach style veto system. No, sorry, not the Halo Reach veto system. They had the Halo 3 style veto system in the game. So that was cool for some of the servers. And you could have dedicated servers or users started servers. And in addition to that, there was Discord integration to the point where you could start a server. And as long as you UPnP, which is universal plug and play for computing devices to basically have. It's a protocol in which your computer can talk to your router and say, hey, I'm going to use these ports to serve this stuff. Forward all the traffic to me. And as long as that's set up right, you can actually host your own server within Halo or the El Dorito Halo Online mod. And then you can invite people through Discord. So I thought that was a really cool integration. So Discord would basically be your friends list. You couldn't necessarily join someone directly, but within Discord, you could go to someone and send them an invite to play Halo Online, and then they can join your server directly instead of waiting for the server to pop up in the server browser and then joining that way. And I thought that was super cool. Yeah, definitely. It took a little bit of kind of figuring out which person could actually host the game. (laughs) And I don't know if Ace is still in here, but when we were playing last Friday or Saturday, we were using him to actually start games off of. And we came up with this game mode which we eventually called Nani, which in Japanese is what? And the point of it was FFA Slayer, but the person that was in the lead, we started off with being 300 times larger. And and this was something that the El Dorito team added, which is leader traits of being able to size the Spartan bigger. And it goes up to the max of 3,000. We tried that and it didn't even spawn us because everyone was too big. But made it to where the leaders were a thousand times normal size. It was hilarious. A 30 foot Spartan wandered around. Pretty freaking much. We played on Valhalla and the thing with it is all the regular size people can actually shoot you since you're much bigger, but since you're bigger and you're so much taller, your weapons that high up aren't very effective. <laughs> The only way to really kill someone is if for somehow, and, and we played kind of Fiesta settings, because you, you could make it random weapon spawns. So the only way that you would really be able to get somebody is if you spawn with a sniper or a BR or one of the other... A precision weapon or a rocket launcher, maybe? Rocket launchers were too slow. Even being that high up, by the time it got to the ground, it was too slow. But the main way in York figure this out. I don't know if he's in the chat right now, but the way that we figure this out is you could actually just splatter people by running over them. So the main way to get kills was to splatter people. Oh, nice. It was a lot of fun. The vehicle kill emblem came up. Well, the splatter emblem came up. Yeah. Oh, it did. It did. (laughs) It, It actually did. And it took it about halfway to the game to figure out that you could actually splatter people. And then and then that's when it all just kind of was evolved. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but another thing that the Elder Reader team added, and I know I'm going on and on and on about what they added, just because I want to kind of get to the highlight stuff before the, the gloomy parts. The low light. <laughs> yeah. For some of the weapons, they actually had tiered levels of weapons, similar to the, the Warzone weapons. So you have like three different versions of the shotgun, three different versions of the needle rifle the and the multiple versions of the BR and that kind of stuff. So for I think the anything that wasn't considered a power weapon so no shotgun no rocket, no, no sniper but everything else like a BR, AR, plasma pistol, plasma rifle, spiker all those kind of mid-range weapons. There are different tiers of what certain things did so some of, some of them like for the for like the BR, it, shy, it 
one of them fired a six shot burst instead of a three shot burst. One of the DMRs had more powerful bullets or it had a faster rate of fire uh, or a bigger scope and that kind of stuff. So there were actually different tiers of these low to mid range weapons within the random weapon cho- choosing. So it was kind of like Super Fiesta in Halo 3, which was kind of cool. Mm, sounds like a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, what else was there? I think for the most part, that was all the the kind of new and improved stuff that we've got out of El Duido. Haven't even touched the Forge yet. All they've really touched is the multiplayer and the server browser stuff. But it's a lot of fun. It's still up to play. Uh, if you if you've gotten it so far, then then play to your heart's content because I know I'm going to be playing playing it very frequently. <laughs> just it's just so much so much fun, and it's, it's it's a nice refresh to the kind of the older days with a new twist on things. Um, you have anything else to add before we go into the legalese and all that fun stuff? Uh, no. Um, yeah, yeah, I pretty much said all I have about it. So, on Monday, I believe? 24th, yeah. Tuesday, 24th, Tuesday. 343 wrote a post on their website, and I'm going to read this uh, verbatim, which I don't normally do, but I feel that it's kind of important. And then we'll break this down and what it means for El Dorito and projects like this going on in the future. And this is posted just in general by the studio, not one specific person. So this is this is what they had to say. And again, this was on this was two days ago on April twenty fourth. Today we want to let our community know that Microsoft has initiated actions to protect its Halo intellectual property in the wake of the recent El Duido PC release. Community created content has long been a key pillar in the Halo franchise and something we have continuously sought to support. From the early beginnings of Red vs. Blue to Forge made maps and modes to the Halo Custom Edition to original recent fan creations like Installation 01. These projects, and others like them, have one key factor in common. They fit within Microsoft's established content usage guidelines. Back in 2014, Microsoft 343 and Saber Interactive partnered with partnered to develop Halo Online, a title that was being developed exclusively for the Russian market. The game was subsequently put into an indefinite hold, but Halo Online ended up in the wild beyond its intended audience and official scope, resulting in DMCA takedown notices being issued by Microsoft. As time went by, Halo Online faded and fell off the radar until the recent exposure of the .6 update shined a new light on the current El Duido project. While we are humbled and inspired to see all the amount of passion poured into this project, the fact remains that it is built upon Microsoft-owned assets that are that were never lawfully released or authorized for this purpose. As this project river, reverberated across the community, our team took a step back to assess the materials and explore possible avenues, while Microsoft, like any company, has the responsibility to protect its IP, code, and trademarks. It is not optional, in other words before I read on kind of want to sum up a couple of things in here. First thing is Microsoft is the one that is taking legal action to protect what is rightfully theirs. And in part of this El Duido stuff, there is a official Microsoft owned code base that is used in the El Duido Halo online version. Cause El Duido is essentially a mod off of the Halo Online game that was being produced and developed for the Russian market. So Halo Online is the rightful property of Microsoft. And there was a couple of things out there about Microsoft had abandoned the project, so it was abandonware, which isn't even a legal legally observed state of software and that it was open source code which it's not it is even though it was accidentally leaked on uh, github and all the source code was made available it was not supposed to be and dmca 
notices were issued to take down the source code where it was being hosted. And back in the day, El Dorito was actually actively getting into the game and making it available for folks within the US. I know I played it a little bit when it first came out and the El Dorito team was able to make it a little more open platform. And this was back in 2014, 2015. Uh, when this happened or sorry 2016 but as far as it legally is concerned halo online which makes up of the majority of the code base that el duido uses is rightful property of microsoft and it is their responsibility to protect their assets which you know any company would yes makes sense if I was in Microsoft's place, I would have no option other than to take this action. And they go into a little bit more description further into the article. So you know, the one thing I want to say before we get too far into this is the community cannot get upset about this. The El Duido team unintentionally broke the law. Uh, that's not quite true. Well, they stretched it quite a bit <laughs> in my, they violated. They're in violation of the content usage guidelines. Yeah. They, and that can lead to severe legal uh, repercussions if they don't they comply with Microsoft. Yes. And the reason I say that is I've already seen multiple tweets where, well, I'm not going to buy a Halo 6 now. Well, that's your choice, but you better have a better reason than that to not buy Halo 6. Because this is not 343's fault. This is not Microsoft's fault. They are protecting their property. Well, it's Microsoft's fault, but they're in the right. (laughs) Well... Well, it's it's their fault that they had to take legal action, but it's also, uh, yeah, M- Microsoft is in the right here. Yeah, well, they did not have, it's not fault they had no option. They cannot let this happen because it sets precedent. Yeah, and we'll get into the legal precedent here in a little bit. Frankie actually has a comment on uh, Reset Terra, which is the new NeoGAF basically we'll get into that here in a little bit to finish up the the news article or the the blog entry we'd like to clear up a few areas of confusion we've seen across the community over the past few days regarding el duido and other fan-made projects in the case of the original halo custom edition this was a specific add-on to halo pc to officially empower no officially empower the mod and content creation community to essentially go nuts with halo combat evolved It even required a valid Halo PC retail key. More recently, Installation 01 has garnered some buzz and even made headlines for receiving a thumbs up from 343. Installation 01 is an original work built from the ground up in a separate engine that abides by Microsoft's content usage guidelines. With with Halo Online, there is a common misconception that it was once cancelled, the assets were either turned over as open source or left in the community's whims as abandonware, neither of which are actually true. Not only did Microsoft issue takedown notices at the time of the original leaks, but many elements of that underlying code and content are still actively being used today and will continue to be in the future, i.e. it's it's used in current Halo games. As Microsoft's need to protect its IP spun up, we reached out to members of the El Duido team to have an open discussion about the project and the admittedly difficult situation we find ourselves in. The El Duido team is understandably upset at this outcome given the time they've each invested into this project, but they understand the legal implications and the need to press pause on this work. One thing remains clear. The community really wants more Halo on PC. As we look ahead, we are very excited about the prospects of an official classic Halo experience making its way to PC, and we hope to be able to partner with the El Duido team and broader mod and content creation community to help inform the types of experiences and features our fans desire. While we have nothing to announce today, please know that the PC community is very important to us and top of our mind as we work towards the future. 
we'd like to extend our thanks to the community at large for constantly pouring so much passion into Halo. While it's unfortunate to find ourselves as the bearer of bad legal news, the outpouring of support and excitement is inspiring, and together, in partnership with this community, we believe we can really do great things for the future of Halo. Thank you. So what does this all boil down to? Essentially, one, all work on the El Duido mod has ceased. 343 in discussions with the El Duido team has said, hey, we appreciate what you can do, but everything has to stop right here and now. We're not going to take legal action against you for what you did, but if you don't stop, then Microsoft will have no choice but to pursue it. And the El Duido team actually wrote a response into a response to what 343 wrote, and they say that they have agreed that they must honor the request to stop development of El Duido altogether. The mod itself is open source, so the link to that software is still available, but the underlying code on which El Dorito is based and mods is now no longer available. So all full code releases of Halo Online El Dorito instead of El Duido is being taken down everywhere it pops up. So even if people are re-uploading it, it's getting taken down with Microsoft Legal. The game is still playable. If you have it downloaded, if you if you download it before the takedown notices were issued for the code base, with some of the recent updates to the whole situation, you are still allowed to play the game. There is Two for Three has been working with the El Duido team and Microsoft to ensure that no one gets punished just for playing the game. What they're worried about is their code being uncompiled out there on the internet to mod or for anyone to download and do whatever they want with it. And that's, that's the thing that Microsoft's targeting is they're targeting the halo online code base and packages for that specific game that was in development and that development was indefinitely halted, a canceled, not abandoned halted and you want to touch on the legal precedence about protecting trademark gt well i mean it's pretty simple the underlying code that the el duido mod was built off of is microsoft property it's no different than somebody stealing the lawnmower off your lawn (laughs) i'm serious it's no different That is your property. They took it. You have a legal right to go after them. Microsoft is taking the high road here saying, we love what you did, even though what you did was wrong. We're not going to prosecute you, but we need you to have, we need all this code off the net. It's pretty plain and simple. Um, I like, and I don't know how long this is going to last that they're not punishing the people that have already downloaded and installed it. They're allowing us to continue playing it. But what that means is there's also not going to be any bug fixes and there's not going to be any updates to the game, At least, which in, in all this fairness, you know, that's the way it should be. I commend three, four, three and Microsoft for handling it the way they did. You have to protect your intellectual properties. And I know I said that word wrong, but my mouth just not working right now. <laughs> yeah, you have to protect that stuff because that is the source of your business's income. You know, when you're talking software development, and that's what games are is software, you have to protect the underlying code or it gets ripped off and bad things happen. You know, I'm a big proponent of freeware and I use quite a bit of it whenever I'm able to, I always donate to these people that are generating this freeware. I mean, one of the programs that I use regularly is voice meter. It is a freeware program. It is a very well-developed freeware program, but I support them. If El Duido had built the game from the ground up, like installation 01 
is doing, then there, there wouldn't be any problems because they wouldn't be using any of Microsoft's assets to build the game. Things that they've paid money to have developed. So if I can give another example, the reason that we are allowed to print and if we wanted to sell anything with the Potacular logo on it is because the Potacular logo was created from scratch. It is not a asset that was taken from any of the Halo games or any of the published picture or art images of Bungie or 343 or Microsoft. It is a image that was built from scratch. So we actually have rights over that image. We can't say it's like Halo because that, that'd be like impersonating likeness of, of Halo. But as Pottacular, we can reproduce that image and modify that image and put it on things to sell as we please. If we were to take the side shot emblem from Halo 2 and then modify that and say, oh, we're going to use this and print print it off and give it away. We're giving away assets that aren't that we don't hold the rights to give away. And that's essentially what's happening here. Yeah. You know, same, you know, same reason that Napster has been taken down and, um, you know, a lot of these other sites, websites have been taken down because they were illegally allowing access to songs, software, whatever, whatever they happen to be marketing, even though they were not profiting from it, it still was not their property to give away. Exactly. Frankie followed up on the Resetra forums, and there's a couple of important things that he notes in here about why Microsoft is doing what they're doing and what 343 is actually doing in the wake of everything that's happened. Um, he said that they're not shutting down the mod or going after the El Dorito crew. They're just enacting to remove the Halo Online code from the places it's being hosted. Um, it's legal necessary legally necessary to help Microsoft protect its assets and it's not optional. They're a public trade company and they have fiduciary and legal responsibility to their shareholders. And if they don't take steps to protect it, then they actually run the legal legal risk, the legal risk of losing it when there's precedence that they didn't uphold their own trademark on their own code beforehand. And since part of the code that is in there is actively being used, i.e. the Halo 3 engine in MCC, which is actively being developed on, kind of makes sense. Yeah. I mean, you know, they can't, you know, as I said before, Microsoft didn't have a choice. They had to act on this um, because if they didn't, it would set legal precedent against them in a future case where they did have to um forcibly go after somebody you know where there's actual legal ramifications as in fines and jail time um so you know you you have to be on top of this type of activity to not set a precedent that can work against you um i i truly am sorry for the elduido team They've done an awesome job with the mod. Uh, you know, like I said earlier, it's the most fun I've ever had playing Halo 3. Same. Uh, it is it is much more enjoyable than the original game. <laughs> Graphically, I mean, even you know, even with the weapon models they have in there, is great. I, I love it. Yeah, I don't even care that I'm carrying around the Halo 4 battle rifle. <laughs> Or, you know, the Reach DMRs in there with Bloom, which yeah, sucks. With Bloom. But anyway, <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's sad to see this go, but the one thing it did show 343 and Microsoft is there's people out here that want this and want this badly. I mean, there's times when I logged on to El Duido and there were 8,000 people playing. This is 3 o'clock in the afternoon Central Time. There's 8,000 people playing. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, yeah, that's not that many people. 
But that's only within the first four days. Right. Five days. And you have to also look at the somewhat limited player base. That is a sizable chunk of people. And I hope that, you know, with the way they ended the article, I really hope that they're sincere about what they said at, in that last paragraph of the article, you know, that they really do invest time in making this happen. Well, it's important to note too, there is a specific piece in the write up that three, four, three had, which Phil Spencer actually tweeted out from the article saying that it's important to note that three, four, three is probably now more than ever looking at ways to make, Halo come to PC and in the first MCC update, one of the things that sketch said was, yeah, the team's looking at the possibility of MCC coming to PC with this. There was probably more of a likelihood that MCC will be coming to PC now. Unfortunately, they won't fix Halo three, but anyway, well, who knows with the, the Halo online stuff. It, one of the things they also said was they are excited about the prospects of bringing an official classic Halo experience to PC, whether that's MCC or they continue on with what El Dorito started with, that remains to be seen. They also said, we hope to be able to partner with the El Dorito team and the broader modern content creation community. So 343 is like, hey, we really appreciate what you guys did. Unfortunately, it's illegal, but we really like what you did. <laughs> yeah. And we would like to work with you guys because we appreciate your passion. We appreciate what you've done with the game and you've made people happy. So it's not like 343 is like completely turning a blind eye to this. They're like super excited about the possibility of working with folks that have essentially brought a lot of different aspects of the community together over a mod. It's an exciting prospect. Most definitely. I mean, it, it does excite me that that last paragraph does excite me. I just, you know, I'm just saying, I hope that the excitement they express in there is genuine, which I'm sure it is. And I just hope that this experience is not forgotten by the, you know, by the developers and the people that manage 343. And the people at Microsoft that manage 343. This is something the community wants. And it's already proven to be something that would be very popular. Yeah. Is it going to be as popular as Halo 2? Who knows? But it's got a pretty good shot at it. Well, and here's the thing. If there's enough people that really like what the El Dorito team did, then tell 343. Tweet at them at Halo. More importantly post on their forums. I know it's kind of a toxic place enough as it is, but post on their forums, tweet yeah, at post them. on their uh, forums that you enjoyed the mod. Don't tell them you're not going to buy oh, halo well, six because they took legal action. <laughs> right. But to tell them why the El Duido mod made you so happy and why you were so excited about it and what it would mean if they brought halo to PC and join the halo community feedback program. If you haven't, for some reason already join the Halo community feedback program and provide input into what you would like to see with the, the future of Halo. The, the Halo community feedback program is for you to provide feedback about the Halo franchise. So between the forums interacting with them in social media and the Halo community feedback program, those are your best options to make change for the future of the franchise. Three for three is a passionate group of folks who want to make halo enjoyable for its fan base it's not something where they're just saying oh we're gonna make it this way and aha we're gonna make money and the fans are gonna have to deal with it no they're they're as excited and down to earth as we are about making a halo game that is fun for everybody you go to events like halo world championship pax rtx gamescom any of these conventions where 343 is attending even with the comic cons Go talk to one of them. You will learn that they are passionate and they want to make relationships with people in the community. It's not a faceless entity that's making the game. It's people who care about the franchise 
and a fair amount of the people that are at the studio grew up adoring the franchise. I mean, take a look at Unishek. He's now an official Microsoft employee working on Halo, and he is one of the most down-to-earth guys I know excited about the franchise. So just be level-headed about when you're interacting with 343. Critique. Don't criticize. Don't hate. Don't... Please don't issue death threats. Please just don't even go there. Be civil. Be open to communication and be open to discussion. The best way to get your point across is to be have have a sound argument but be open to discussion and other people's opinions or things that they know that you might not know. Be civil. Remember, it's a video game. It's not life and death. I think a lot of people need to remember that. <laughs> yeah. Does some of the things that happen with Halo frustrate me? Yes. But that's every game. There's things that frustrate people with. I only play one game, game, so it doesn't matter. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I get frustrated, and I've expressed that frustration on this podcast before. But I don't think, well, I don't ever remember getting evil about it. You know, I didn't call them stupid idiots or anything like that. I accused of him not paying attention to what the community wants. I'm sure just in your correspondence with three, four, three, whether it be through the feedback program, through the forums, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, be considerate. Remember that there is a human being on the other end of that post. Let's touch on another couple of things that are related to this. And then we'll move on to the community update. Bonnie also put out a tweet saying that, she loves and shares the passion for PC and the classic Halo games and to let us know that they are investing in both moving forward, which also kind of leads towards another post that Frankie made over on the Resetera forums um, saying that they've said a number of times that our future games starting with Halo Wars 2 and Halo Wars 1 on Steam will be coming for Xbox and PC and by logical conclusion, if there was a Halo 6, which we know there basically is a Halo 6. By that logic, it would be coming to PC. So, Frankie's kind of unofficially saying that, yes, future Halo games will be on PC without officially saying it and not having to be held legally bound to it later on. <laughs> is that plausible deniability? But essentially, Halo will be on PC in the future. Judging by what's happened with the El Duido stuff, we could very much likely see an emphasis on MCC coming to PC. And with a lot of the fixes that they're doing, with MCC, if it came to PC, it'd almost be like a new relaunch of the game, which could bring breathe a whole new life into Halo player base. So the prospect of that alone is huge. So I'll leave that there. Another thing is Twitch had started issuing temporary 24-hour bans on streamers that had been streaming Halo Online. So if you are you are a Twitch streamer streaming Halo Online, just don't risk doing it. Play the game. Don't risk streaming Halo Online anywhere. We don't, they don't know if this is a Microsoft thing that they told all of these streaming platforms to ban it or if it's the streaming platforms reacting and wanting to keep themselves out of legal hot water whatever the situation is don't risk streaming the game just play it tell your friends about it if they've managed to download the game but just don't stream it don't post videos don't risk getting a DMCA takedown notice for any content that you're putting up with the game 343 is actively trying to make sure that the streaming providers do not ban players for streaming. It's one of those things that since the content was never legally released in a proper format, that the stream providers may block those services, whatever privacy policies or whatever legalese that they have within their company. Uh, I noticed that Mixer no longer has Halo Online as a game entry to be selected in their platform anymore. Then again, Mixer is owned by Microsoft. 
Um, it's still Twitch entry still and Twitch. It. Yeah, Twitch still has it, but until they can clear the the muddy water as far as YouTube goes and Twitch goes and any other platform, best not to risk it at this point. Yeah, most definitely. I I, I would not. I just wouldn't do it. Yeah, don't don't risk it. Play it and enjoy it, but uh, don't flaunt it. We'll wrap up the podcast with the latest community update. Thanks, Grim, for releasing it in the middle of our episode. At least it wasn't 20 minutes after we stopped. That's true. That is very true. Uh, first up is a little bit of a recap of Halo Worlds. As we discussed on the previous podcast, we have a new reigning champion for Halo 5. So the old champions, Tox, got taken down by Splice. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, again, it was a 4 row series as the last two world champion finals have been, which kind of sucks. We'll we'll see what happens, I guess, in the future. It'd be nice to not have blowouts in the very final game of a tournament. That's neither here nor there. We discussed that in the last show. Go to the last one. We had the we had Taz, and then we had JK Fire and I am Mr. Mayhem on from the Battle Halo show and HCS Pro Talk on for our last episode. So if you haven't checked it out yet, please go check it out. Check the podcast out and go check out their podcast as well. One of the artists has their drawings up on the blog as well, David Hydoff. And it is basically one of the Spartan Athlon armor sets with the Halo Championship Series logo on it. And it's a really well artwork. And you also have the Space Needle reflection in the visor, which is a nice little touch of Seattle with MLG being there. There's a top five moments that they compiled as well. For anyone that was watching the Mixer stream, we added that to our pre-roll. So hope you enjoyed that. There was the MCC development update number three, which we covered last week. And the first flight is actually being issued out, has been issued out already. So for those that had signed up for the MCC Insider, um, check your emails to see if you were invited to participate in the first flight. This is a really small batch of people that they're focusing on this time. I'm not sh- I'm not even sure how big it is, but judging by the post that sketch made last week, it could be as small as 500, maybe a thousand tops, but they do plan on expanding it. So if you've signed up or you haven't signed up yet, go ahead and sign up. Halowaypoint.com slash MCC insider. And also make sure that you are participating in the Xbox Insider program. You just do the just the regular preview. That's not like the alpha preview that has all the really, really early builds. Or I th- actually, I think there's different levels of Insider that you can partic- participate in. Anyways, the well, way that you actually... on uh, Well, with the Insider program, I'm not in front of the Xbox that's actually in it, but uh, with the insider program, I mean, you can pick how quickly you get the updates, but I think as far as what ring you're in is determined by the insider program based on the amount of feedback and how active you are in the program. So the ring, I think you can pick if I'm not mistaken. No, because you get builds before I do, and I have it set to the to get the updates as fast as possible or as early as possible and you you get updates before i do okay interesting yeah insider content has a bunch of different things that you can participate in like there is a minecraft beta program i'm also in the xbox insider and i have the xbox one update preview and i am in the preview alpha and there's alpha beta delta omega and then you can unenroll so you can even be have the insider app and maybe not be having to get the Xbox one updates. Anyways, download the insider app. Uh, make sure you're rolled as an insider program participant. And that's the way you're going to be getting the, the MCC flight stuff. And again, it'll be a standalone build. You don't have to uninstall MCC, which will be exciting. I'm looking forward to it. As long as I can get in. Next thing up on the update is 
the latest loot crate. It is truth foretold. Um, as the name implies, it is going to be the overall theme related to the Covenant Empire. So there'll be another Halo Icons figure, another Glow in the Dark t-shirt, and these will be available until June 15th. And you can head on over to lootcrate.com slash podtacular and then use code podtacular at checkout to get $3 off of your crate. The image theme for this crate is pretty cool. Kind of a mashup of some of the latest stuff that we've been seeing with Halo 5 and Halo Wars 2 and a little bit of the Halo 4 foreignery type stuff. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's actually a cool shot. I have to see if I can find a copy of it that doesn't have the uh, Halo Legendary Crate emblem on it. I don't think there's many of them. I wish some of these artworks actually were in full 1080 or had 4K versions of them so I can make them as wallpapers. Yeah. It'd be some pretty sweet wallpapers. We have the mention of the Elimination playlist that will be coming out. Uh, in this update as well, and I guess I kind of alluded to this earlier, but on May 2nd at 1.30 p.m. Pacific time, so again, while we're working, that's when they'll be doing their community play date with Unishek and the Elimination playlist. Probably be one to two hours again, but that will be taking place again on May 2nd, which is next Wednesday, starting at 1.30 p.m. Pacific time, which is 4.30 p.m. Eastern time and 9 30 PM European time or sorry, UK time on the community front. There is some community created Halo Wars two tournaments that have been uh, making the rounds breaking the clutch. The banished and team respawn have been uh, working together to make a Halo two championship league, which is community run and curated. So there is more details um, in the tournament program all over on the Halo Waypoint blog. So that was posted yesterday. Uh, make sure you go check it out. And if you're interested in participating, then might be something worth checking into. I don't know if Bobby, you're still here, but if you have decent enough internet to play it, maybe you'd be a good potacular rep for that. If you're not here, maybe you're hopefully you're listening to afterwards. The next update is uh, Operation Tribute which is a Another community mod that's been made similar to Sins of the Prophets. So a team has gone and built their own Halo assets in the Arma 3 PC game. And Operation Trebuchet is the specific mod that lets you play uh, as some of the Halo units and some of the uh, Halo vehicles have been recreated in there as well. There's a whole interview on the update and since this came out during our recording tonight, I haven't had a chance to read it, but it will probably be something where eventually we'll have a chance to go through it and maybe get some of the Operation Tribute folks on to talk about what the mod fully entails and what you can do with it. All you need to do to get in the action is get a copy of Arma 3, and then you can subscribe to the Operation Tribute mod on the steam workshop they also have a facebook page and a discord channel which i will join those two radar blips uh we talked about the old el duido stuff um there's the gamers for giving land that's happening this weekend which is the gamers outreach uh charity this is the same charity um that we have uh worked with to uh, get the gaming carts. This is the charity that we support during the Halo Bowl. They have a fundraising tournament every year, and this one just happens to be this coming weekend. Uh, there will be a Halo 5 LAN uh, taking place during the events, which start on Saturday and go through Sunday. Um, ticket sales and donations from the event go to help provide the go karts and other kind of gaming entertainment devices for hospitalized kids. So definitely check out gamersforgiving.org and either donate uh, to help out, or if you're going in person, you can register to participate. And they're looking for a goal of 
three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and they've already raised more than half of that so far. Actually, just almost exactly half at this point. Again, great cause, great charity. Uh, we've been supporting them for a couple of years through the Halo Bowl, and while she is a huge proponent for the, for them. If you watched during Friday of Halo WC, you would have seen that he was wearing his Gamers for Giving pin, lapel pin on his jacket. So definitely a worthy cause for checking out. The Chariot T, the t-shirt that was being sold during Halo, the Halo Championship Series with proceeds going to um, the War Child Gaming Charity uh, is up for sale now for the public. So Halo tweeted this out on Tuesday. So you can go and get a retro style Halo Master Chief Icon t-shirt. And again, all the proceeds of that go towards the War Child UK uh, charity, which helps children affected by conflict. Uh, The second issue of the three-part comic series from Halo Collateral Damage is now available for pre-order. It has a cool new cover art up on the community on, or up on the update community spotlight couple of videos Minolta's vlog which has been kind of making the rounds is a very popular one that has one has been included so kudos to you Jeff for making it into the update there's also a couple of other community creations uh, one being a doodle I'll call it uh, on a notebook some pretty co- cool artwork and is done by Bartelson1337, which I think I've seen his name pop up a couple of times before. And yeah, it's really well done, I think, as kind of the line art. Yeah, it's a nice cartoony chief. Mm-hmm. Kind of reminds me of the Mr. Chief Wreck video a little mm-hmm. bit. Similar it style. Does, it it actually like. does, yeah. Yeah. We have some Halo Hot Shots which includes a couple of screenshots of your standard military green Spartans. Uh, it is Master Chief with the Mark IV, Mark V, and Mark VI with kind of a hazy military green and brown background, which is pretty cool. Primordial 117 pops up again with some... What, what do you call those? Like the action bubble things? There's a term for them. There is. Comic strip type deals. Yeah, it's like the the boom pow kind of bubbles. So he made those in Forge and <laughs> like they look really crazy but at the same time pretty cool. Uh he has a Spider-Man being an, an elite. There's a there's a smash which is Hulk smash, Avengers Assemble which is Captain America and he made Captain America's shield in Forge which is insane. And then there's Swoosh which is basically it looks like an elite being Iron Man and the blue beam coming out. So I think that might be in honor of a certain movie that came out today. You think? Probably. We're we're probably going to wait at least a week to see it to let the crowds die down just a tad. Yeah, I think I might wait until it comes out on (laughs) Blu-ray. Because I think that's about when the crowds are going to go down. I think it'll probably be crowded probably for two weeks, maybe three weeks, and then it'll quiet down a little bit. So we'll see. I thought about going out and watching it this weekend, but I'm like, no, I don't want to deal with it. (laughs) That's understandable. Someone made a picture of a Spartan on vacation, basically, which is kind of cool. And then the last Halo hotshot that we have is someone recreating the Halo icons figure from the last arena legendary crate. And they did a pretty good job. Basically just yeah. mashed up all the Athlon armor with the the white and the HCS colors and then did the thrust to the side. And it's pretty dang accurate, actually. Yeah. Except for the head's a little out of scale, but yeah. Well, it's it's kind of Funko style fied because it's yeah. a bigger head. But yeah. Kind of a nice little short update. Yeah. Well, a lot of the stuff has been summed up by other posts that have been made. The only thing that we didn't get a chance to dive into a lot is the Operation Trebuchet mod for Arma 3. Within a couple of weeks, we'll probably have time to get around to that. 
And maybe we'll be able to get it straight from the horse's mouth. Yeah. That'd be nice. Although, it'd be good to read up on it a little bit. I had heard it thrown around as a mod, and I think Laird was the one that first actually introduced it to me. But we have a couple of other things that are coming up. I know we're currently looking at organizing a round table with some other podcasters and uh, some YouTube personalities possibly to go over some of the stuff that's happening with the El Duido stuff. Um, the HTS Pro Talk guys were thinking maybe if possible to get the El Duido team on to discuss some of the things that are happening with the whole situation. But probably either next week or the week after we'll have some kind of community round table with podcasters and YouTube and other influencers to discuss what's happened essentially so yeah look forward to that happening and that'll wrap it up for us tonight it's a little bit long we almost went two hours and we went three hours last time so lots of stuff to talk about especially with the El Dorito stuff again this is Microsoft taking legal action on what they need to protect what is rightfully theirs 343 is wanting to make sure that no one suffers from this. They want to make the community a safe place and they want the best for the El Duido team and the community out there. So they're working as hard as they can to make sure that there's as much leeway for the community as possible, but within, but staying within the law of the land. And, and that's, that's where we said out there for us. You can check us out on podtaggler.com that's where you can find links to our social media and past podcast episodes highly recommend checking out the last two where we had the beta halo show and the hcs pro talk guys on uh, when we were at seattle for the halo world championship series and the last episode where we did a recap and talked about the latest mcc development update you can also check us out on our social media platforms we are on twitter facebook and instagram as far as our video platforms, we have Mixer, Twitch, and YouTube. You can also check us out on our Spartan Company and our Xbox Club. Again, GT will be hosting, as long as we get enough people this weekend, the final episode of Achieving Halo for Halo 5. You want to plug that real quick with all the details? Uh, yes. Uh, if you would like to join in, uh, you can hit me up at Godzilla T on Xbox, Godzilla Todd on Twitter. And we will be recording probably 7 p.m. Eastern time, unless people that are wanting to do it need later or earlier. So that's kind of flexible. So if you're interested, let me know what times you'll be available. It should take between one and two hours, uh, depending on how uh uncoordinated i am that night but anyway it usually takes in, in between one and two hours to get it recorded we usually do two runs through one for kind of a practice run so everybody gets an idea what they need to do and to help you get the achievements if you don't have them and then we'll do another pass where we actually do the recording for the episode and this level is not extremely difficult. We'll be playing it on heroic. So well, at least I believe we'll be playing it on heroic. I have to double check the achievements. Uh, so if you're interested, just hit me up. Sounds good. For our live streams, you can check us out on Thursdays at 9 PM, which is when we record our podcast, at least regular or normally. You can check us out on Twitch, YouTube, and Mixer on Friday nights at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time when Godzilla T hosts our Fraggin' Fridays. That has been on Halo 5 uh, with MCC builds coming out. Once it kind of gets towards more of a public light, we might start transitioning into the MCC uh, feedback stuff. But for now, we're kind of sticking with Halo 5. So come on over and play some super fiesta or big team or once we get into some of the favorite rotational playlists some of that stuff or zone again 8 30 p.m eastern time on friday that's 5 30 p.m pacific and that is 1 30 a.m uk time so it's a little 
a little late for the UK folks, but if you have the chance to hop on, then certainly please do so. And then I stream on Sunday nights around 10 p.m. Eastern time. Since I finished the Halo Legendary campaign, I'll probably be following around with achievements for Halo Wars 2 and MCC. Um, possibly trying to get some stuff with Bobby, depending on internet connectivity and stuff. We'll see how that turns out. But for now, that's kind of what the Sunday schedule will look like from me. That'll wrap it up for us tonight. Thanks everyone for either downloading us or tuning in live. We appreciate everyone's support. And again, just a reminder, please don't stream any Halo online content or post any videos about it for risk of being DCM, DCMA takedown. Know that it's Microsoft protecting their assets. I think everyone's kind of come to accept that by now, but just in case, Microsoft's doing what they needed to do in order to protect what's rightfully theirs. And 343 is working closely with the community and they want to work with the LWDO team and the community to bring a ex Halo experience to the PC. And if there's ever a time where the community has made a point where it's needed, it has been now. So you can guarantee it that they're listening and they're now actively looking for ways to get Halo to the PC. Hopefully that puts a lot of people's minds at ease. We are always open to conversations on Twitter or Xbox. So if you see us and you have questions or you disagree with something we say and you want to have a discussion about it, please let us know. Reach out to us. If there's some concerns, we can filter it up channels to other people and, and try to get some answers out of certain things. But no matter what you do, be civil in your discussions with people and just don't jump to conclusions if you don't have all the information. That's, all, that's probably one of the most important things. If you are passionate about Halo, be passionate about why you love Halo and how to better Halo, not pick and belittle and criticize. There you go. Thanks everyone for tuning in, downloading us. We'll catch you guys next week. Until then, keep on fragging them trucks.